Welcome everyone to today's video. During this month's pickup of the SG Octane, I also got something else from this basement, which is an Hewlett Packard Visualize C200 workstation. And as you can see from the focus point, it's a rather huge thing. And the reason I took this is because it has even another processor architecture that, that even I did not yet have in the house, namely a HP PA RISC, Hewlett Packard RISC processor. Hewlett Packard initially developed them as 32-bit processors and later extended those to 64-bit as well. So this is a PA RISC 2.0 instruction set architecture with 64-bit RISC. Of course, originally this came with the Hewlett Packard Unix HP UX that I personally have never seen or used. And of course, there is Linux port. And as far as I've seen, you can run the Linux kernel either in 32 or 64-bit mode. Some 64-bit architectures you can only run in 64-bit mode. As far as I remember, mostly Spark and PowerPC, for example, where 32-bit kernels would not boot on 64-bit machines. And here's the PA risk. Linux developers recommend 32-bit for the slightly higher performance. So let's quickly take a look in this and then also try to get Linux installed. Actually, Rock Linux. Actually, Rock Linux and Zust 2 has support for PA risk, and I even know the one who was doing PA risk development and testing and such with Rock Linux back in the days over a decade ago, but I've personally never used it. So this gives us opportunity in the long term to also support PA risk just for the fun of it in T2, and I already cross compiled the latest trunk. However. There is a limit on how much vintage stuff I will store here. I will... Most machines I only have once, but I even have three Sun Ultra 5 because I later, a decade ago, got two for free. I will most likely give away this two additional Ultra 5s that are right now in the attic at my parents because I certainly do not need three of those and I'd rather see others playing around with this and I will also not get more of the same architecture. So, so if for example, right now missing in my collection is only DEC Alpha and Intel Intenium. As you have seen in the videos, in the meantime, I have quite some machines. I will try to only collect one of each for the most part and only get very exceptional machines otherwise. So getting this out, I've done this already. It is extremely hard to pull this out. Most, mostly, I've actually Put it on the floor. I just don't want to do this because filming the floor does not look as nice. No. As I've taken it out three times already, now the fourth time was slightly easier. The first times I really had to pull with all force on the floor and, and such. One could think that this construction is elegant. However, with the first week on this, I don't like it so much because first of all, it is extremely difficult to pull out. Second of all, if you pull it out, you don't have it on the table. The whole thing is also quite big and heavy. Pulling it out is quite difficult to start with. And also you cannot run it open, for example, to service something or to if, if something is not working and such, you cannot keep it running and measure something or easily attach storage and such. More to this in a second. Nah, now we got the right error on the storage card. Awesome SD stuff from Samsung. I hope we recorded the first part. Here is where a hard drive would be installed. And as usual with this kind of things, now that there is no hard drive inside, I don't have this special plastic or so tray thing. That is obviously a little bit annoying with this special vintage storage things. And also this power cable here to the CD-ROM was also missing. So Apparently the CD-ROM was not used actually. I think even the SCSI wasn't plugged in. Not sure what is up with this. If they maybe they had a hard drive here somehow laying on this cable that the CD-ROM wasn't plugged in. But anyway, as this power cable was also missing and this is a power cable I cut off from a regular ATX power supply from a PC. Obviously this is working with the standard Molex connectors. I tested the CD-ROM already the other day so that is working. And the SD card and camera had some makeup so I lost this clip, so this is filming it again, and this is a slightly different PA risk and more details about the story of getting this one as well as the other HP Visualize workstation in the next videos. 
So it's basically the same as the other, just that this one doesn't have the second SCSI card as well as a less powerful VGA card. As I may mentioned earlier, this looks like a DVI connector but is some special Hewlett Packard analog connector. And this VGA card is some EISA model, less powerful than the other that was a PCI model that also itself is utilizing this Hewlett Packard PA RISC processors, maybe like four of them or so for graphic rendering. However, the other one did not produce any video output for me. Not sure if the card is defect or the other system board or whatever. We will need to find out later. However, this card may have a chance to work better with Linux. We will see. I have not yet turned this on. This We will do this in a minute. Also, this battery is not a regular 2036, like in PCs and such, but a thinner and larger. I need to look up the exact model again. And so here, under this heatsink and fan construction, we have the main PA RISC CPU, 64-bit. As I said, I did not turn this on. The other one was 200 megahertz. I think they started at 200 megahertz up to 360 or something. So, as well as all the system memory controller glue and such. And this, I guess, uh, dual channel or so memory. The other one had 256. Again, still need to see how much this one has. They are connected with this high density connector there, this PCBs for the system bus. And as you can see, there are this EISER as well as PCI slots. So let's plug it back in and see if this one boots also because this has a storage. The other one had no hard drive. So I'm also for the other missing the special hard drive tray slider things. And let's see what this one is doing while trying to boot and what kind of memory and clock speed we got. In good old Unix tradition, obviously as heavy as I obtained some good 25 kilogram, I estimate. So these blinking lights are normal, this is a self-test indication. If those lights are stuck, you should be able to determine which part of the system fails. There are some tables of light combinations. As I don't have a VGA display with me, I'm now waiting for outputs on the serial console. 